Hello, something for the festive season is this little Christmas tree that I've got from Banggood. Now, I've got to point out for YouTube, Banggood does send me this item for free so that I can make this video. But I don't earn any commissions on the sales and I don't get paid for making the video. So all I get is the actual product that I can use in the video. Right, now that's over. Uh, the reason I chose this was because it's nice and simple to just quickly solder together. And if you're starting in electronics, little kits like this can be very, very handy. Now, the interesting thing with this is it comes with all the parts and it also comes with a sort of perspex case to build it all into. Now, it takes 37 LEDs, although for some reason they give you 40. So there's three spares and the LEDs themselves. If I just connect it directly to the battery, it will actually change its colors on its own. It cycles through the red and the green and the blue because the LEDs have their own built in little microchip as well. So they're really nice for this sort of product, I guess. Uh, all the transistors are exactly the same. They're all 9014 transistors and all the capacitors are the same. 47 microfarads at 16 volts. It comes with a switch to switch it on and off. Uh, micro, who is that mini? That's mini USB. That one is not micro USB. And a cable so that you can plug it into one of these sort of battery connectors if you wish and just run the thing for hours and hours off one of them. Now, it does come with two different resistors. Brown, black, 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 brown. So that's uh, 100 ohms. And uh, this one, yellow, violet, black, brown, brown. So that's 4.7K uh, resistor. And you don't get any instructions with this. So you have to go online to find the instructions. So what I've done, I've just written down sort of what goes where on here. On board A, which is this one, resistor 2, 4, 6 and 7 is 100 ohm. Resistor 1, 3 and 5 is 4.7K. On board B, resistor 2, 4 and 6 is 100 ohm, and resistor 1, 3 and 5 is 4.7K. So I'm just going to quickly just solder this together, basically. It's nothing too exciting. It's just uh, I enjoy doing little things like this sometimes. It just keeps your hand in at soldering. I find that the smaller components, as in the ones that aren't going to stand off the board most, really should be the first components that you put on there because if you put the tall components on there like capacitors and things then when you put the resistors down sometimes they can fall out when you flip it over to solder to the other side so resistors then you can solder one item at a time if you wish if it makes it easier for you but i just i'm just sort of rushing along because i want to just get this built and what you should do you just tin the soldering iron first. Give it a clean. I've got one of these little sponge things on the soldering iron here so I can just give it a wipe there and clean it and keep the end nice and clean. Now it's better to use solder that has a resin or flux inside it so you'll have flux actually running inside the solder and that just makes it a lot lot easier. This is old old solder you can't really buy this anymore. This is 60-40 solder, which is 60% tin, 40% lead. But because of the lead content, the new solders now don't contain any lead, but they're slightly higher temperature to melt them. So with your solder, if you just tin the tip of the soldering iron first, don't worry about that smoke too much. That's the uh, flux that's burning off. And what you want to do is you want to get the soldering iron right down next to the pin and come in from the other side with the actual solder. And if you have a little bit of solder on your soldering iron, that sort of closes the gap. So it transfers the heat much better. And then bring it up and you should have a shape like a little peaked mountain. It's the only way I can describe it, a peaked mountain. And that would be a good solder joint. So just do that one as well. You can't really put solder onto the soldering iron and then touch the part. It, it doesn't really work too well that. You've got to sort of come in from the other end. 
So by doing it this way, I'm heating up the pin of the resistor, the leg of the resistor, and also the pad with the soldering iron first. And then I'm coming in with the solder, and that's melting really nice and easily into place. So that's sort of the way to do it. Try not to inhale too much of this uh, if you're soldering with this old lead solder because it really isn't any good for you. You should really have uh, some sort of fume extractor. But if I switch on my fume extractor, you probably won't hear what I'm saying because I've got a really old knackered one that's very noisy. Snip off the excess wire. The next component, I think, best is going to be the transistors. Now, on the transistors, it's easy. The shape has already been printed onto the board for you. So all you've got to do is make sure the flat side of the transistor marries up correctly with the flat side that you've got on there, like so. So I'll put those three in and then solder them on. You don't want to leave the soldering iron on there any longer than is necessary, especially when it comes to surface mount components. Just solder it, job done, and that's it. Don't leave it on there for ages because you can actually damage the component. Check in between the pins to make sure it's not soldered across, that the solder hasn't flowed across. There we go, only one more component to put on well, barring the LEDs, of course, and that is the capacitors. And you notice one side of it says positive. Uh, some capacitors will say negative the other side, but obviously you just put positive to positive. A lot of capacitors are marked with a negative next to one of the legs. But if you're unsure, a lot of the capacitors also have one leg longer than the other, and the longer leg is generally the positive. Now the same thing with LEDs is you have one pin longer than the other and that is generally the positive. So I'm just going to pop all these LEDs in now. Now I've also noticed on here that there's another point for another LED to go in the very top here, like the star on top of the tree, if you like. But if I put that in, I won't get the tree in through this slot. So obviously I've got to put the tree in the slot first and then put that one on last. So I'm not gonna bore you with the second one. I'll just do that one off camera now. So that's both the tree parts sort of complete now. And this is the base. Now the base, requires this mini USB adapter. That's obviously where it's going to get the power from. So because that's the shortest component, I'm going to put that one on first and then I'll put the switch on. Now, this has to slot together. I don't think it makes any difference whether you slot it down that way or you slot it down that way. Ah, well, apart from the fact that the LEDs are in the way of the capacitors, so it looks like I've got to bend the LEDs out first. So I'm going to have to bend that transistor slightly as well. That's better. Now I've got to solder that into this base. And on the base you'll see a plus and a minus, and a plus and another minus. So as long as you get the two pluses together, it's marked on the board that these two should be plus and these two should be minus and then solder it into place. This might be a little bit tricky. I think we've got to put the top LED in as well. Yes, we have a result. It works. Right, all the LEDs are working. It looks quite nice actually. I'll just straighten up a couple of them and then I'll start building the box for this thing. That looks just as awkward. Now this is an, uh, an acrylic box and <clears throat> excuse me and when you get it it has all this sticky paper on so you have to peel all this off first and that's to kind of just protect it until you're ready to use it. 
Now one of these base plates has holes in it, so uh, that's obviously for the bottom here. So I'll unplug this again for now. Aha, at last, get the screwdriver out. A project without a screwdriver isn't a project. It's very fiddly, but I like fiddly little jobs like this. Okay, the big test. Plug in the power supply. At last, it's finished. So there you go, all flashing away. And you see the LEDs do actually change colour as well as flash, apart from the one on the top, of course, which stays on all the time. But there you go, nice little project to do for your festive season. All the best, thanks for watching, bye bye.